One thing I like to do with electric circuits is to take vintage technology, vintage parts, and use them in new and interesting ways. And one of the ways I've already shown in another video is to use thermal time delay relays to make a very slow acting A-stable multivibrator, but nonetheless an automatically oscillating circuit that uses nothing but relays, just one, two individual relays, very easy circuit. There's lots of other ways and I'll some projects I already have built, some of them I have yet to build to make oscillating relay circuits. And of course, the most obvious one that I've known about for a long time is something like this, where you have a power source going through the uh, normally closed contact, and then that goes to the coil. And then that, of course, causes it to oscillate quite rapidly. There we go. Quite rapidly like that. It's very annoying. You can't really get, you know, a nice one or two second hertz uh, um, oscillation of frequency to flash a light bulb or anything like that. Of course, you could put a parallel capacitor in with the coil. And I'll do that here. But then the, the relay is on 99% of the time and that clicking, that's only when it goes off very briefly and then back on again. So not a very nice 50% duty cycle. So one way that I found to get a nice control or somewhat controllable frequency and somewhat controllable duty cycle is to have um, hook up a relay in such a way that it has negative resistance. I had never really realized this before until recently when I was fooling around with these relay circuits. But basically this is what it looks like if you hook up the coil in parallel with one of its normally open contacts then you can consider that to be a negative resistance element because as you increase the voltage eventually it gets to the point where the coil turns on at the pickup voltage and then the resistance from here to here will drop extremely to a low value and if there is no other current limiting then the current would be would shoot up very very high almost I mean if in the ideal case it would be a perfectly vertical straight line but of course there is a little bit of resistance in the switch contacts and then of course as the current can come back down and flip over that way to this drop-off voltage at which point the voltage would go down if you were to drop the voltage a little bit lower so anyway we got not only negative resistance, but hysteresis as well. And here's a very basic circuit. With I already made another couple of videos where I showed how to make relaxation oscillator using a neon lamp as a negative resistance element, and also another one with a reverse bias transistor. So go check those out. But this one has a relay in there. And the basic waveform just looks like this. It's slowly charges the cap through the resistor until the coil turns on and at which point it will close the, the contact switch right there and that will short circuit the cap. The cap drains very quickly and then until the voltage gets low enough where the switch opens up again so then the capacitor continues to charge again and it just keeps going up and up, up and down like that in between the pickup voltage and the drop-off voltage. And so here's the circuit that I built, about 26 to 28 volts and all these other value parts here you can see. And this is what it looks like. Let me turn it on, hook it up to a power supply here. And it does tend to be a little finicky. Let me turn down the voltage just a bit. There, now it's oscillating.
and sometimes it goes in these two two different modes. There'll be you know, click 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 click, and other times it goes clack clack clack. So I'm not sure what's going on there. Let me raise the voltage a little bit now. There, that's about a 50% duty cycle. But anyway, there's this is the, the 82 ohm resistor right here. Here's the 10,000 microfarad cap. The re coil has about 300 ohm DC resistance and 27 ohm right here. This resistor is very important in order to give a nice smooth discharge of the cap as well. Whereas over here there was no resistance in series with the switch. The cap discharged instantaneously. In this case I wanted to go smoothly up and then smoothly down. And in fact I can I'll short circuit that resistor, this 27 ohm, with a 1 ohm resistor. Now you can see how that completely changes the cycle. And I'll hook it up on the scope too so we can see this. Alright, so there you can see the, the slow exponential rise and then very rapid drop of the capacitor voltage. Now let me take out that 1 ohm resistor. And now it's a nice exponential rise and also a slow exponential fall. So that's a nice way to make a oscillating circuit using nothing more than a relay and a couple of passive components and you're you're all set. You got a nice little light bulb flasher I'm not sure if old cars actually use this kind of circuit. I think they had a bimetallic strip in the, the turn signal flasher, uh, but I could be wrong. I'm no car mechanic. So I'll be sure to have more videos in the future about different kinds of relay oscillator circuits. See you later.